I have got to thank the pretzel guy for this bottle of wine. Now think, Spike, think. Why can clean things and make pretzels nice and chewy? Mmm, pretzels. How about using some of this stuff to clean something? Nah, no, nah, that's boring. Wait, I can show how this stuff works on pretzel dough. Then I can use Dad's toaster oven to cook up some mini pretzel nuggets right there at the science fair. And then I can offer some as a snack to the judges. And then, humbly accept the science fair grand prize. Yes, Spike, you're a genius. Oh yeah, opportunity is knocking. Wow, I can almost hear it. Oh, wait, wait, that's the door. Oh, uh, who's there? Spike, open up, it's us. Liz? Yeah, and Lucille and Julia. Quick, open up, Spike. Come on, hurry, hurry. All right, okay, I'm coming. What's the emergency? Spike, have you opened that bottle of lie yet? No, not yet. Good. Uh, we caught you in time. Yeah. yeah why? What's going on? Uh, the professor told us some things about lie that you really need to know. Yep. Oh, you talked to the pretzel guy's brother? Did he help you out? Oh, he sure did. He gave us some great logical arguments for the existence of God. Huh. I can't wait to talk to Cammy about them at the science fair. Uh, yeah, yeah. H- however, uh, we are here to remind Spike to be careful with that bottle of lie. Oh, yeah, lie yeah. is powerful stuff. I'll say it cleans. It makes pretzels tasty, and it wins grand prizes at science fairs. And it can be dangerous right. if you're not careful with yeah. it. Dangerous? How in the world can something that makes pretzels taste so good be dangerous? Well, really? the professor told us that lye can cause burns if you get it on your skin. What? And mm-hmm. that under the right circumstances, lye can cause explosions. Yep. Oh, who's ever heard of an exploding pretzel? I mean, come on, Spike, Julia. you seriously need to get your mind off the pretzels. And you need to wear gloves when you handle that stuff. Yeah. And some protective eyewear. Oh, I suppose I should wear one of those yellow hazmat suits, too? Maybe a gas mask? Mm, That's not a bad idea. Oh, come on, I was just joking. Seriously, dude, it would probably be better for you to think of something else to do for your science fair Uh project. What? No way. This bottle of liquid is going to get me something that only Cammy has ever gotten. Namely, the science fair grand prize. You really, really need to be careful with it. Really. Really. (gasps) Really. All right, all right. If I promise to be really, really careful with this stuff, will you leave me alone? Yeah. Yeah. All right. I promise to be really, really careful. Now, bye. You know, funnily enough, Spike, that came off as less than sincere. Please, please listen to us, Spike. It's better to be safe than sorry. Okay, okay, I'll be safe, all right? But Cammy will be the one who's sorry. Sorry she lost at the science fair for the first time in forever. I think they make these science fair poster boards bigger every year. I could hardly get this one through the gym doors. Oh, I've been waiting all day for the science fair. Morning classes could not have gone fast enough for me. Hey, uh, make way, ladies. Ow, oh, sorry. Uh, Liz. Liz, the scientist, on the move. Ow, sorry. Hey. Uh, ready for an Come afternoon on. of scientific discovery? I can't wait to talk to Cammy about the logical arguments for why God exists. Oh, I know, me neither. I hope that we can show her that God is the maker of all things. Just look around this gym. All these great science fair projects can proclaim God as the creator. Hey, hey, how about your project? Mm -hmm. Weren't you two researching the power of prayer? Mm -hmm. Yes, we were, and what we discovered was so cool. But not surprising. Research studies have shown that those who pray have better mental and emotional outlook and are better able to handle stressful situations. Wow, you're right, that is cool. Mm -hmm. You know, you haven't mentioned your science fair project, Liz. Hey, hey, Liz, what'd you do? I'll show you. Take a look at the title. Frozen Fractals. Hmm. Hmm, Just like that movie we went to see. (laughs) Yeah, my mom suggested that I take some pictures of the movie and put it on my poster. Oh, I like how you cut out and put paper snowflakes all over your poster. Let's see what you wrote. Fractals are geometric figures, just like rectangles, circles, and squares. A snowflake is like a head of broccoli. Yeah, seriously, broccoli. I mean, can you believe it? That's just gross. Both broccoli and snowflakes have a big, thick stem, which splits into several branches. Each branch, in turn, splits into smaller ones, and so on, eventually stopping with a very large number of tiny buds. I really like what you wrote here, Liz. The chances of two snowflakes being exactly alike are... Wow, that is a big number. Yeah, it's 10 followed by 158 zeros. Whoa, that's huge. Yeah, my mom and I found out that the number of atoms in the entire universe is 10 followed by just 80 zeros. And that means the chances are that there have never been any two snowflakes alike since the creation of the world or ever will be. Whoa. And just think how many snowflakes must have fallen since God created the world. Exactly. Oh, 
It makes my head hurt. <laughs> Your poster really shows how creative that is. Great idea, Liz. Thank yeah. you. Hey, everyone. Science Fair Grand Prize winner coming through. Hi, Spike. Hi. What's all the stuff you're carrying? Yeah. Well, in this box is a container of pretzel dough, along with my dad's mini toaster oven, a shaker of salt, and in this aluminum pot, the star of the show, Lie. Ew. Yeah, I really hope you're being careful with that. Yeah. Rest easy, kiddos. Look, I've got the lye in this aluminum pot, into which I will dip the pretzel dough before popping it into this little oven, using tongs while wearing gloves. Oh, good. And observe, the lid of the aluminum pot is held in place by duct tape. Okay. Can't spill no matter how hard I try. Safe enough for you? Mm. Well, we just want to be sure you're being careful with the lie is all. Yeah, better safe than sorry. Then sp- sorry, so I've heard. Mm. So, what's in the other box? Oh, just a few props and other items to help make my presentation more entertaining. Entertaining? Oh. Yeah, listen, I'd love to stick around and talk, but I want to be sure I'm set up and ready to go when the judges come by. Just look me up later. My table will be the one with the big old trophy on it. Whoa, between our cool projects and the chance to share with Cammy about God, I think this might just be an afternoon that we'll never forget. Wow, this is the best science fair ever. I know, there's so many great displays and projects. It's really exciting. Yeah. Oh, by the way, you guys did a great job with yours. It looks really nice. Oh, I'm glad we got to be beside each other. Yeah. So when do you want to go over and talk with Cammy? Uh, probably whenever that crowd around her display thins out a little bit. Yeah, yeah it's packed right now. It's pretty impressive, I have to admit. That's true. Hey, guys, don't forget to stop by my display a little later for some tasty samples. You want to get there uh, a little early, because once I pull the lid off the lie and get cooking, my crowd is going to leave Cammy sitting by herself listening to crickets. Wow, you really think you can pull that off, Spike? Hey, once the judges get a taste of what I can do with lie, it is game over. If the judges gave out points for confidence, I'm sure you'd get them all. Speaking of judges, I heard there's some rumors going around that there's going to be some sort of surprise special guest judge or something. Someone famous, I think. Wow, that'd be be cool. Anyway, I'm going to head back to my display. I'm just about ready to roll. Okay, we'll see you a little later, dude. All right. Well, a special guest judge. I wonder who that could be. Excuse me, would any of you be able to tell me where I might find Mr. Well, blessed Bunsen Burners. Uh If it isn't Julia, Lucille, and uh, Liz. Professor Peabody. (laughs) Last week in the Science Museum, now this week in your school, God must have a plan for us to keep meeting like this. (laughs) How are you? Oh, we're doing great. Hey, are you the special guest judge for the science fair? Uh, Yeah. Indeed I am. Mr. B asked me if I wouldn't mind stopping by to take a look at everyone's displays. Oh, good. That was a no-brainer, as they say. I love science fairs. (laughs) That's awesome. (laughs) By the way, your friend who was working with Lai, did you get a chance to talk to him about the dangers of sodium hydroxide? Oh, we did, and amazingly enough, he's being very careful. That's surprising. I guess when you want to win as much as Spike does, you do whatever is necessary. That's good to hear. And where is your friend Cammy's exhibit? Oh, I see that big old crowd over there. Indeed I do. Cammy's in the middle of it. Yep. Yeah, we're not sure when we're going to get a chance to talk to her about the logical explanation for God. Not with a crowd like that around her. Well, the crowds will have to move aside so the judges can come through. Would you three like to join me so that we could all have a conversation with Cammy when we get to her display? Oh, well, oh yeah. yeah. We sure would. Excellent. Uh-huh. Professor Peabody, so glad to see you made it. Mr. B, I wouldn't have missed this for anything. Thank you for your kind invitation. Oh, the pleasure is mine. Come with me to the speaker's podium. I'll introduce you to everyone, and then we can get started making our rounds to judge the entries. Fantastic. Stay close by, kids, so you can be sure to have your conversation with Cammy. Will do. Hello, everyone. Everyone, may I have your attention, please? Thank you. We're very happy to see such a high level of participation in this year's Reptarium Middle School Science Fair. I have to say, this is the best one yet. I'd like to introduce this year's special guest judge. Please welcome renowned astrophysicist, Professor Simon J. Peabody. My, such a warm welcome. Thank you. So wonderful to see so many of you actively involved in all sorts of scientific order discovery. Whether you're searching the farthest reaches of outer space or peering into the smallest microbes, 
I'm looking forward to viewing all your entries. So let's do this. I hope that you're enjoying looking at the exhibits. I really liked what you said about order discovery. Yeah. Indeed, Lucille. Order discovery with science is like putting together a big picture puzzle. I like to think that when we finally solve the puzzle, we're going to see a picture of God. Oh, that's so that's neat. Cool. Yeah. Well, now, we're finished with this side of the room. What do you say we now head over to see Cammy's display? Oh, and, and don't forget Spike's display, Professor. He's been talking about it for days. Yeah, I hope you like pretzels. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Spike is going to be making some as part of his project. Uh, pretzels? Did you say pretzels? Yep. You can't be the brother of the pretzel guy without loving pretzels. <laughs> Yummy! <laughs> well, Spike's going to be really happy to hear that. Yep. Oh, good afternoon, Professor Peabody. Welcome to my display. And good afternoon to you, young lady. My, look at your detailed start charts and illustrations. Yeah. Those must have taken a lot of research and preparation. Mm -hmm. Very well done. Oh, thank you. So, tell me a little about your findings. Well, my research involved Einstein's theory of general relativity and the nature of the universe. Ooh, good, go on. All right. Einstein's theory shows that time, space, and matter are co-relative. That is, without one, you could not have any of the others. That is correct. And Einstein's theory led to further discoveries that show that the universe had a definite beginning. So that time, space, and matter suddenly appeared out of nothing and formed our ordered universe and life itself. Yes. Now, for the important question, mm -hmm. what caused time, space, and matter to suddenly appear? Oh, well, there was a big... Oh, 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 oh what is that? Uh, oh, it's a spike to play. Oh, 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 to Battalion Chief, the building's clear. Repeat, everyone is out of the building, Nova. Excuse me, sir. What happened in there? It appears there was a small explosion from one of the displays. Apparently a container of lye combusted. Lye? That Spike's display. Is Spike no. okay? Yeah. Your friend is fine. Fortunately, there was more noise than fire. No damage to anything. Oh, no damage except for the fire sprinklers soaking everything with water. This is very unfortunate. I thought your friend was being careful with his sodium hydroxide. He was. Yeah, he yeah. even showed us the aluminum pot he was carrying the lion. in. Oh. What's the matter, Professor? What? Sodium hydroxide reacts with metal, <gasps> aluminum in particular, oh, to no. form hydrogen gas, which is very flammable. Oh, no. I'll bet a spark from that toaster oven ignited the gas that must have built up in the metal pot. Whoa! Yes, wow, indeed. I'm glad there wasn't any damage from the explosion. Perhaps not from the small blast, but everything is definitely water damage from the sprinklers going off. Oh, and just when we were getting ready to talk to Cammy. Has it anybody seen Cammy? Well, she went over to Miss Waddle when the two of us got outside, but I don't think she's going to be in the mood to talk to us. She was really upset about her display being ruined. Yeah, and that her parents hadn't seen it yet. Roger, Battalion Chief. Fire engine one out. The building's been uh, cleared for re-entry. Ah, oh, great. What timing. That's the last bell. End of the day. Well, I guess the science fair is done for this year. Yeah. That's that, then. Maybe we can talk to Cammy tomorrow. If she's in a mood to talk after what happened here today. We'll see. Not at school either. Uh, I really thought she might be here. Yeah, I thought she might too. She's got to be feeling awful about how the science fair ended yesterday. Yeah. Speaking of that, look who is here. Oh, Spike. Spike. 
Looks like Spike needs some cheering up, too. Seriously. Oh, hey, guys. What are you doing here? We're looking for Cammie. Have you seen her? Cammie? She hasn't come back here to the scene of my disaster? <laughs> Watch out, world. Hurricane Spike's on his way, complete with rain showers. Oh, uh, come on. It's okay, Spike. Yeah. Well, other than a bunch of really soggy science fair exhibits, it's okay. Mm. Hey, dude, that's why it's called an accident. You didn't mean for the sprinklers to come on. Yeah, huh? you know what they say. <laughs> Into each life, a little rain must fall. What? <laughs> what? Oh, sorry. Ah, what a mess. Looks like half the school just dropped things as they ran outside to get away from those sprinklers. Seriously, I have papers, pens and pencils. Yeah. Man, there's all kinds of junk here. Yeah, look, here's someone's notebook. I wonder whose it is. Wait, you're not going to look inside, are you? Well, well how else are we going to find out who it belongs to? Yeah. It doesn't take Sherlock Holmes to figure out this mystery. The notebook belongs to Cammie. What? Huh? Says so right here on the front cover. Yeah. Oh. Well, she must have dropped it in all the confusion yesterday. Hey, look, there's a note in here. It says, when things are in disorder, find refuge in order. Hey, what does that mean? I guess we do have a mystery. Hmm. Well, I think it's a clue to help us find her. I feel so bad for Cammie. When I don't know what to do, I find refuge in reading the Bible and praying for wisdom. But what does someone do when they don't believe in God or the Bible? Wow, I never thought of that. Wow, it must be really tough for somebody like Cammie. So where do you think Cammie would go to discover order, like it says in her note? Well, Cammie finds science to be very orderly. Okay, so how do you find orderliness in science? You go to some place full of science? Like, maybe... The, the Science, Science Museum. Museum! Do you really yes. think Cammie's gonna be there? Well, there's only one way to find out. Come on, let's go. Yeah, come on, Spike, come with us. You could give Cammie her book back. Yeah, I don't know. I think she might hate me right now. Giving her the notebook will be a very good thing. Yeah, yeah it might make both of you feel better. Well, come on, dude, you should totally come with yeah. us. I guess I should do something. You know what? Come on, everyone, to the Science Museum! Whoa, yeah. Yeah. Look for Cammie. Uh, Cammie's note said to find refuge in order. Hmm. Okay, hmm. so what's the most orderliest place here? Orderliest? If orderliest is a word. Do <laughs> oh, you remember the exhibit with the model of the solar system? Mm. Oh, yeah. It shows all the moons of the planets orbiting and all of them orbiting around the sun. Oh, well, that seems orderly to me. Mm -hmm. That's what I thought. The exhibit's over this way. Come on. Right. Oh, there she is. Cammie. Oh, hey, hey Cammie. Cammie. Oh, hello, Julia. Nice to see all of you. Oh, you, Cammie. Oh, hello, Spike. So what brings you to the Science Museum today? Spike? Well, this, for one, here. What? My notebook? You found my notebook? I thought it was gone forever. Where did you retrieve it? I found it in a bunch of stuff that kids must have dropped while evacuating the school yesterday. Oh, yeah. Don't remind me about that. It was awful. I really messed up yesterday. I can't make it better, but I can say I'm sorry for what happened. Thank you for saying that, and, and thank you for finding and returning the notebook. How did you know to find me here? Well, a note fell out of your notebook that said, when things are disorderly, to seek order. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, I wrote that. So, we figured you might be here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <sighs> things have been so disorderly for me lately. Uh, and then yesterday happened. I had to come here. Seeing how the universe is ordered helps me feel better somehow. I like how it makes me feel that God is in control of everything. It reminds me of Psalm 8 that says, When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon, the stars, which you have set in place. Uh, of course, believing in a God who put all of this together does not follow the laws of reason and logic. Arrive at that conclusion, young lady. Oh, oh hi, Professor Viva. Viva. Uh, Hello, everyone. I'm so sorry that your science fair got <sighs> rained out yesterday, so to speak. Excuse me, Professor. I'm Spike. It was my lie experiment that caused the sprinklers to go off. I'm glad to meet you so I can say I'm sorry to you, too. I see. Thank you for apologizing. I'm sure we all appreciate what you have said. Now, just to be helpful, perhaps next time you need to review your data to prevent such an event from repeating. I thought I knew all I needed to know. Lie cleans, lie makes pretzels yummy. 
Now I know lie explodes. Well, yeah. Curiously researching how lie acts in nature would have been very important to your project. Uh. I'm sure next year you will do much better. Thanks, Professor. And speaking of curiously researching, I was most impressed by the work and effort you put into your display, Cammie. Oh. Top-notch work. Oh, thank you, Professor. Now, as I recall, before we were interrupted by Spike's uh, lack of research, <laughs> we were discussing the nature of the universe in its beginnings, were we not? Yes, we were. And you thoroughly documented that space, matter, and time all came into existence at the same moment. Yes, science has proven that. And what else does science have to say about beginnings? Um, not sure what you mean. What does the law of causality say? Oh, everything that has a beginning has a cause. It's one of the main building blocks of science. Excellent! You are <laughs> correct! So tell me, what caused the universe? Well, my friends would like to believe that God caused the universe, but you and I know that it had to be something else. And why would you and I have to know that? Because for God to have made the universe, it would have had to have been a supernatural event, something outside the laws of nature. Mm, I see. And what do the laws of nature govern? Well, uh... Oh, whoa, whoa. I know this answer. Uh, space, time, and matter. Right. Ah, but if space, time, and matter did not exist prior to the beginnings of the universe, then natural law could not have created the universe, and we would be left to conclude that the creation was indeed a supernatural event. Hmm. Oh, Professor, you explained that really well. That awesome. I thought so. No, uh, I, I think I missed everything after now, as I recall. <laughs> well, Cammie, what do you yeah. think? Yeah. Does God creating the universe sound logical now? Well, Liz, it all sounds very interesting. Okay. I will certainly give this some more thought. Mm, that's a good start. This line of reasoning helped me to believe in God and eventually led me to Christ a number of years ago. That and exploring the Bible to discover that God is the God of all things. So you are a believer too, Professor? Yes, I am. And huh. if you'd ever want to discuss this further, or if you have any questions, you are more than welcome to ask me anytime, Ken. Oh, thank you, Professor. I will consider it. Excellent! And by the way, Spike, yeah. you'll be happy to hear this. Mr. B and I have discussed the matter, and to help make up for yesterday's rained out science fair, the Science Museum will offer class field trips starting next week. Each oh. class will receive a personal guided tour of the museum by me. Enjoy the tour, Professor. Oh, and just one thing. What's that, Professor Peabody? We'll make sure that Spike leaves his sodium hydroxide at home. Yeah. <laughs> and then I do lie. Oh, oh, <laughs>